Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. As of late on the news, I've heard stories about that company known as Sears Roebuck, a company that has been around since, I guess, 1893, and now is facing bankruptcy and store consolidations and so on and so forth that comes with that. Now, if there is one thing that I remember as a kid about Sears was a certain item that showed up about mid-November in the mail that would cause me to dream and have visions of what could be. It was the Sears book known as the Wish Book that was about that thick, fully colored, the first two-thirds of that catalog was a waste of time, as far as I was concerned. It had clothing and hardware and washing machines and lawnmowers. Garbage. It was the toy section that caught my eye, so with pen in hand, I would peruse the pages until I found what caught my attention. Usually it was the G.I. Joe action figures that did it for me. So I would circle each one that I wanted and scribble out the ones that, well, were already in my collection. So in my head, I wished and wished for those characters colorful, colorfully posed on those, page, on those pages. I wished and I hoped that they would show up underneath that Christmas tree. Some years, success. Other years. Clearly, whoever was reading those marks needed better reading glasses. <laughs> I thought my circles were clear. Regardless, it was fun to wish. In our gospel for today, James and John are hoping their wish will come true with Jesus. Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left hand. In other words, these two disciples are asking Jesus, hoping with Jesus, wishing with Jesus, that their future, when the world comes to an end, is certain. Let me put it another way. When the world comes to an end, Jesus, oh Jesus, please punch my ticket into heaven to make sure that I am secure. Now their hope with Jesus was to be a, well, a simple, yes, come on in. But no. Instead, Jesus challenges them, starting with verse 38, if you'd like to follow along. But Jesus said to him, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink or to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied rather, well, boldly, we are able. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you'll be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left hand is not mine to grant but it is for those whom it has been prepared, as we see so wonderfully on our three crosses that represent what happened on that Good Friday day, someone that was seated on his right and left, crucified. And when the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those who... They recognize as their rulers lorded over them, and, they, and, their, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever, now here's that word, wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever, again, that word again, wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, at this point, if I were James and John, I would have probably started retracting the statements and the questions that I was asking Jesus. 
For the essence of this passage is to first recognize that Jesus is not a granter of wishes. If that was so with Jesus, there would have been a whole lot of people that would have been receiving some money from the lottery the other night. <laughs> now it's over one billion, and I guess we're having another drawing here soon. Furthermore, the part of the scripture needs to be addressed with the verses prior to it in Mark 10, starting with verse 32. It goes a little something like this. They, the disciples, were on the road going to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them, and they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them, what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will be, con and they will be condemned, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles, they will mock him, and they will spit upon him, and they will flog him and kill him, and after three days he will rise again. And then on to our passage for today with James and John. As the people here, we have heard the story. We know how it's going to happen. We know that Jesus gets mocked. We know that he is spat upon and flogged and then killed using crucifixion, a horrible torture mechanism. We also know that he rises again on that Easter morning. To us, this story is not an outrage. It's not scary or causes uneasiness for us. For we know what comes next for the story it's about hope. This story of our Christ gives us hope. Yet with the disciples, they have not reached that point yet. As far as they were concerned with Jesus, their rock, in whom they trusted, was going to be destroyed, was going to die. And to ensure that they were taken care of when this death of Jesus comes, James and John desire for a wish to be granted so that they can be protected. In other words, James and John, I believe, were a little bit terrified and wanted some security. Verse 45, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many too often. When it comes to our faith, there are many Christians that focus just on the end of days where we should be living our life that has been granted to us in the now. By Jesus' sacrifice of atonement by his blood, see Romans chapter 3. We'll talk about that next week. Where our Christ over and over and over and over again redeems you, saves you, frees you to serve as the person that God has created you to be. I know it's fun to wish upon a star, just like Jiminy Cricket likes to do, or wish upon a coin as it hits the waters in a fountain, in the hopes that dreams come true. But you, my friends, have been given something far greater. Something far greater that meets you in your reality. Where our God who suffered and died and rose to life and did so so that you can have life in the midst of your brokenness. Over and over and over again, you are granted life. So if you need a reminder of this, you can get out your pens, right? And take out your God catalog and start circling. Start circling those parts where God gives you life, in particular, the Easter story 
There's four opportunities for when you read it, you'll be reminded. To be reminded of a life that has been given to you now and always. Hear these words from our psalm for today. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will uphold them because they know my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. That's a wish that I would want to come true. Salvation always for me and you.